Amen. Amen and amen. Yes, God, you are so good. Yes, our God, you are so good. You are faithful. You are kind. You are loving. You are just. Father, you are so good, Lord, that you have brought us together again. Father, you have kept us safe for this hour. My Lord and my God, you are so good, Papa, that you have kept us together. You have kept us in one accord, Lord, so that we will give praise to your holy name. My Lord and my God, accept our praise and our thanksgiving in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we have come to taste of your goodness yet this time again. Father, we have come to taste of the goodness, the abundance of your mercy. And Father, that is why we sing you are so good. Father, we sing you are so good. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, for what you are going to do tonight. Thank you for what you have been doing for us, my Lord and my God. Because you are goodness itself. You are goodness itself. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. My dear brothers and sisters, we want to welcome you once more to our gathering today. We want to welcome you to our fellowship. Um, you're welcome to the Hearts of Jesus and Mary ministry. And tonight we shall be looking at a part of scriptures, we shall be going into scriptures and um, bringing out a few things. One, in the spirit of the season, we know that Christ is the, the reason for the season and it's a season of joy, it's a season of happiness, it's a season of rejoicing, it's a season of hope, a season of restoration. And being that as it may, as children of God, we are called to all of these qualities, enumerated, all of these qualities spoken of now. We'll be looking at a scripture from the gospel according to Luke. And it is one we are all very, very familiar with. It's a scripture we're very familiar with. I'm not going to saddle us with the um, burden of reading the whole story and it is from Luke the gospel of Luke chapter 15 from verse 11 to 36 and like as I said it is a story it is a part of the scripture that we are all used to that we all know but I'm going to be reading from verse 25 which is our focus from verse 25 to the end and I read in Jesus name and reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the um, um, the Catholic edition the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible the Catholic edition Luke 15 25 now his elder son was in the field and when he came and approached the house he heard music and dancing he called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf, because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him. But he answered his father, Listen, for all these years I have been walking like a slave for you and have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed a fatted cow for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. My dear brothers and sisters, the gospel of the Lord. And we say praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You would agree with me that this is one scripture 
that we are all familiar with, even in the time of our catechism, um, um, in any Christian gathering, I think at the preliminaries, at the very beginnings, we all hear about the story of the prodigal son is one story anybody can tell, even without knowing from what part of scripture the story is coming from. It's a story that any one of us can tell, and a lot of us know the story. And oftentimes than not, two characters are emphasized. The character of the prodigal son himself and that of the loving father who waits and sees the son from afar and runs in excitement and joy to welcome the son by asking that a sandals be put on his feet, a ring in his finger. Reinstating him, reinstalling him, giving him a position of authority again. Celebrating the son. We all know these two characters. And the, 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 the part of the father is one that is very loving, is one that is very comforting, is very consoling. And we all readily can point to the fact that this is how our Heavenly Father is always willing and ready to welcome us no matter how far we wander, no matter how wide we wander. The Lord would always welcome us with open arms and reinstate us to our position of honor and dignity as His children. Why is this scripture being be a source of reflection tonight when we are talking of joy, of, of hope, of peace, of love? Something readily comes to mind. The, the character of the older brother is oftentimes downplayed. Yes, he's seen as the one who is obedient. He's seen as the he is seen as the loving son who does what the father requests of him. But something oftentimes we do not hear is that this brother is all about commands, is all about laws, is all about merit. Then the question comes to mind. Is he doing this out of love for the Father? Is he doing it willingly? Or is he doing it because of what he is to get from the Father or from that work that he is doing? And this brings me to mention to us what I tie to resist the, the kill joy spirit. The kill joy spirit. There is a tendency. We see that all the time. There are people you, you can point to. We can point to. We can even point times in our lives that we may have acted in that same way. We may have been agents of kill joy. And this, you would find, you would find very many examples where um, somebody comes excitedly to say, oh, see, um, I just achieved this, or I just got this, or I just bought that, or this just happened. And you find that, that some people would say, hey, so what is all the excitement about? Are you the first one to do it? Immediately that person's joy is killed. The spirit is dampened. And it brings to mind the, 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 the role of this older brother. And I was listening, and I had shared this in my group, um, and certain questions I asked. If we look at this older brother, let us see where, in our own Christian journey, in our own race, in the spirit of the season today, where do we stand? In which of these four categories of questions that I'm going to put forth, where do we stand? Your brother leaves home, takes a portion of your father's property, 
wanders far, lives a wayward life, you're not bothered about him. The whole attitude is like, oh, thank God he's gone. So everything now is mine. And of course, we'll see that in the course of the story, the father reminds him that it is only good that we celebrate this, your brother. You know that every, everything that I have is for you. Because his is about reward. His is about merit. And these four questions come to mind that we ask the brother, where were you when your younger brother was making the terrible decision he made? We find ourselves in groups, in families, in the society we belong to different small units of, of groups here and there. And we see people going on the wrong, not undermining the fact that there are some people who are unapproachable. But again, as children of God, we can stand in the gap for them and begin to pray that they turn away from their, 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 their ways of error. But what we see happen is that when our brothers and sisters whether in our immediate family, in our Christian family, in the work family, they are in the wrong. Sometimes there is a tendency for us to be happy because it will make me look good to the other person. That, oh, see, I'm not like that. It will make me look good to the other person. I am not like that. Or the authority to see me as the better person from this person who is in the error. While this person is at the brink of falling into the gutter, you don't grab by the waist to say, hey, you're going to fall into the gutter. But we are waiting that it happens. And then we can go ahead to say, oh, see, don't you see the kind of person that he is? So the question comes, where was this brother? This scripture tells us, Oh, it looks as if there are only two brothers because no other mention, there's no mention of an, another sibling or something like that. It was just the two of them that was mentioned. So this brother you grew up with all of a sudden disappears, all of a sudden wanders off. And from all indication, they are like farmers and headsmen caring for, 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 for livestock, for, for, for animals and things like that. That means there were times that you had travelers from other, from other regions, from other places who come to buy whatever they were producing from their farm or whatever they were taking care of. And somehow that brother would have heard that his younger brother is eating the pods of the... Um, uh, the pot that was meant for the for for the pigs, and he never thought of going to look for this brother. Never once did he go, thought of going to look for this brother to say, "Where is my brother? I'm going after my brother. This is the person I grew up with. Where is he?" Never once did this cross his mind. Oh, he is gone. Everything is mine now. Everything is mine to keep. Everything is my own. He, there was never an attempt. Do we see ourselves today doing that? This, like as I said, this is a season of joy. This is a season of rejoicing. This is a season of happiness. How do we contribute to people's happiness? How? Do we encourage or how do we rejoice in their downfall? These are all questions for us to ask ourselves as children of God. How come this brother, the older brother, never for once went to look for his brother? From the way the story is, the, the, the story is put, the father saw him from afar. That means I am thinking 
that this man every day he goes he stands out there he is looking He's looking out to see if his son is coming with the herds of people, the people coming towards their direction. He's trying to see if the son is amongst these people. That's why no wonder the day the boy realized himself and decided to come back from afar, the father sighted him and ran before he got home. Now, this father was rejoicing. Oh, he's rejoicing that his son has come back. The one that was dead is back to life. The one that is lost is now being found. And here comes the spirit of kill joy. The older brother comes, obviously very upset. Very, very upset. Now, why? Would, what is happening? First, there are two sets of killjoys. If you read these scriptures very well, you would see that the servants are no better. The servants are no better. The brother, I would read that part again. Say, now his elder son was in the field, and when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come. And your father has killed the fatted calf. Is that, why the mu is that why the music is being played? Is that why there is dancing? Is it because the fatted calf was killed that there is music? We see how the slaves put it to kill the brother's joy immediately. To plant a seed in the brother's mind indirectly saying you have been slaving you have not gotten anything now they are celebrating the fatted calf they have killed it for this guy if this was not a spirit of kill joy it would have been oh there's music everybody is dancing because your brother has come back but instead if you read it they talk of the fatted calf first gains reward that is what is stressed and so that kills the boy's joy that kills his spirit that crushes him and with that anger he refuses to go in he would not he would not celebrate his brother who has returned it tells me that he was happy the brother was gone Permit me to say, if maybe when that guy was even taking the decision, he encouraged him, he didn't try to discourage him. He encouraged him to go ahead so that everything that is there now would be for me and me alone. How come you are so obedient? Yes, you will tell me that some people just, just have the attitude or the character of their own. How come you were not a source of influence? And he doesn't even just stop there. When the father makes the attempt to approach him, he, he begins to give the father reasons why the father shouldn't have celebrated the return of his brother. Do we find ourselves doing this? You would hear people say, see, see that girl when we were growing up we lived in the same street she, 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 was, she was a very loose girl going out with all the boys on the street going to the clubs going to this going to that see in no time she just got one good man married the following year she had twins she had children she just started having children look at me I have been I have been in the church all this while I have been this I have been that and this is not happening to me we are complaining, we are groaning, giving God reasons why that person should not have that thing and it should be me. Sometimes we will not say it directly to God. We will just be lamenting that why would it happen to that person and not happen to me? Why? We would give reasons. So in this season, 
let us be mindful let us be conscious let us be aware let us be alert when the spirit of kill joy is around when the spirit of kill joy comes oftentimes I tell people when um, in organizations in places where we all work and you see people competing against each other um, and trying to bring each other down by all means possible and I say who is the opponent here who is competition here it is not amongst yourself that there is competition it, it is not amongst yourself competition is someone who is doing the same business with you that is that is taking a large chunk of your business so also in Christendom in Christianity oh um, this person can sing can sing why 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 I'm, I'm upset that I cannot sing like the person I am grieving I am upset why for what reason for what reason that person is not competition to you that person is praising the God that you call on the two of you call the same God the enemy is the enemy of God and not that person who sings or who prays or who does more devotions than you in church that is not the enemy The enemy is the enemy of God. It is Satan. And you should join in that one who does a service in church better than yourself. Or that you have judged to be better than yourself even when the Lord has not told you that. Is to join in praising our God. We ask again, why was the brother so angry and bitter? Why was he so angry and bitter? So you were happy your brother was lost. You were happy your brother is gone. We find ourselves in a situation where uh, um, uh, you know somebody who has lived a wayward life and the person comes to church. You find out that sometimes uh, you can even use your elbow and talk to that person. Hmm, see this one, what do you can't do for church? Hey, devil did go to church. We can say things like that. Forgetting that Christ said he has come for the sinners and not for the righteous. It is the sick that needs the physician and not the healthy. We often times, we often times describe people with their faults, with what we know that they have done wrong, with their obvious sins. We often describe them. Don't you know the, uh, the son of that prostitute? Or oh, the son of that divorcee, that uh, girl that gave birth to this and that. The person's fault becomes the person's identity, even in Christendom, even in Christianity. So the Christianity where the error and fall of a fellow Christian becomes an opportunity to rise is evil. So also in Christianity where we try to gain favor and prove loyalty before authority by discrediting or running down a fellow brother or sister is seen to be satanic or devilish. And that is what it is. Because the moment you hear, oh, uh, Brother Emmanuel said, eh, hey, we, we said it before. This is how he was behaving. This is how he was acting. No compassion, no love, no empathy, which was what the elder brother lacked. In this season of joy, 
in this season of joy in this season of great rejoicing in this season of hope of restoration can you resist the kill joy spirit I remember a story that 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 my mom told us and uh, it, it, it shows a clear example of killjoy. What happened is, my, when my parents got married, the first five children my mother had were girls. In fact, when she had the number five girl, and the news came to uh, my father's people, one of my grand uncles said, why are they rejoicing? The one asked, uh, oh, what did, what did she give birth to? They called my mother's name and said, uh, what did she have? Then the other one, instead of saying, oh, she had a baby girl, say, is it not what she gives birth to that she has given birth to? They would not call it a, na- they would not call it a child. They would not call it because this is a girl. It's not what they were expecting. And I remember my mother telling us that as that as my sister came out, they raised her and she saw that it was a girl, she started crying. She was crying. Because again there was the spirit of kill joy. And yet some would look for even just one of those girls. And they can't have it. And here was somebody who had it. Another has come to kill her joy by what they say and what they do. You call your friend, oh, I just bought this car. Ah, uh-uh, ah, is this the one you are buying? There is a newer model. What are you doing like this? We don't rejoice with them. Or you wear a, a fine cloth to church or something, or you, you dress like, mm. This one don't rain pass now. This one, according to according to my brothers, this one Nakoche is it's something it's outdated. It's old school. This is the time that this is the season that we see a lot of those. Uh, some people are under undue pressure, pressure that is not necessary. Like I was saying, somebody was just worried, oh, I don't have money for the Christmas. Another person asked him, is it your birthday? Is it your birthday? Why are you? Is it your birthday? It's the birthday of Christ. Celebrate Christ. A Christianity where we neglect and abandon our wounded brothers or sisters is also demonic. This person has fallen. Or has gone to get a child out of wedlock. Or has gone to um, impregnate a second wife. Or a, a girl outside or a woman outside. Or has fallen out of grace in one way or another. And that person is abandoned, seen as an outcast, treated as an outcast. Again, we are told, we know that this in itself is demonic this is the season of joy this is the season of rejoicing why would we want to be agents of the spirit of kill joy a christianity where the fall of a fellow brother or sister becomes a topic for gossip and discussion is evil we hear it. Hey, have you, you don't hear what happened. Have you heard what has happened? Sister XYZ, this is what has happened to Sister XYZ. In the same fellowship, in the same church, sometimes in the same family, you hear, you hear siblings calling a brother or a sister the black sheep of the family. And they can talk and convince their parents to abandon that one, to leave that one. Oh, that is the black sheep. Don't introduce him. Hide him. Hide him. Or hide her. 
Don't talk about her. That in itself is evil. You, I, 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 I remember back at home, maybe as zealous Catholics, when we get to know some of our uh, separated brothers, uh, especially um, the, the, the pastors, we are often then, as very young children, we'll talk against them and this and that and that. And only later on, only much, much later on, somebody one day was, was talking to me uh, on the word of God and was like, do not heap curses on yourself. You don't know the anointing. You don't know um, under what anointing this man is operating. You've run him down. Whether you know his fault, you know whatever. It's not in your place to do that. It's your duty to pray for him. It's your duty to pray for him. So also amongst us, how do we encourage people? How do people's successes truly make us happy? Let us ask ourselves, or does it make us envious? Does it make us bitter? Does it make us angry? Do people's successes, do people's achievements, do we really celebrate people's achievements? Do we really celebrate people's successes? Or we are upset. Why is it only this person? Why is it always this person or that person? Why? Why? This is the season, like I would continue to say, the season of joy, the season of hope, the season of rejoicing. Let us begin to imbibe. Let us begin to embrace that spirit of true joy, of true happiness. Yes, sometimes it is not easy. We ask the spirit of the Most High God. We ask the Holy Spirit to help us. Enough of the hate in the church. Enough of the hate in fellowships. Enough of the hate in families. Enough of the hate in society you find out that we we uh, um even let's say in the church for example uh, where you have people of different of different cultural backgrounds and ethnic backgrounds there's a tendency to look down on some and say oh people of this how are we different from the from the from the um, how the gentiles were discriminated against how are we different from those people Enough of plotting against each other. Enough of analyzing and amplifying each other's weaknesses. The moment we know it, it becomes, it becomes a target. It becomes a target. It becomes that thing that we happen each time that person's name is mentioned. The thing we want to say or the thing we want to bring to the other person's consciousness is this person's weakness. Oftentimes people do that to make themselves look good, to, to feel good about themselves. And very many of us have fallen into errors. Very many of us have fallen into errors. Errors of pointing fingers and not now concentrating on those areas of our lives that are deficient. And will be in errors. Your brother or your sister who has fallen is not your enemy, the devil is. And your brother or your sister's fall should not bring joy to you in any way. It should not make you happy. It should not be a cause of rejoicing for you. It should not be. So, we should not just be carried away with a story of the love of the father of the return of the son the penitence of the son either genuinely or because of hunger or lack of shelter 
whatever it is. The Father rejoiced. The Father rejoices when we come back. The Father rejoices when we come back. No matter the reason for our coming back. His only joy. His only joy is that we return back. Whatever the situation, whatever the circumstances, no matter how broken, no matter how scattered, he is happy to receive. He is happy to welcome us again. But on the flip side, let us not be like the elder brother. Let us not be like the elder brother to the prodigal son. Who on the contrary tries to kill the father's joy by giving him reasons why the father should not celebrate. We should not be those people. Especially in this season. Especially in this season. Somebody has been without job and all of a sudden he gets a job. They are going to be paying him $8 an hour. Say, ah, ah. How can you take this kind of thing? Now, when your mates are making uh, $15 an hour or $20 an hour, what are you doing with this kind of thing? Really? Really? For one that has been without, the one that has been without job, the one that has, that has sat in sorrow thinking from day to day how to meet their expenses, how to run their bill. And you become a source of their sadness you become the source of their sorrow why are you angry and bitter why why something good happens to your brother something good happens to your sister he builds a house he buys a new car or buys a house you go inside you smile <laughs> you go inside and you are burning. You are burning. Then why would this happen to this person and not me? The Christ that we follow. The Christ that we are waiting in great expectation for. Come Christmas Day. Is the one that truly rejoices. That gives true joy true happiness to his people we cannot be followers of Christ we cannot be called the children of God and will be agents of kill joy we cannot say we love Jesus we cannot say we are following Jesus we cannot say we are called Christians Christ like when our attitude when our personality, when who we truly are, is in contrast to who Christ is. Christ celebrated people. He was there for their weddings. He turned their sadness into joy. Is that what we are planning for this season? Just imagine the number of us in the ministry. If we all turn around and do good to one person, just one, and it passes on like that. If there are 900 of us, we have doubled that number. Why? Why? Why are we angry and bitter? When our brothers and sisters exceed, succeed, improve, are elevated. You know the spirit of killjoy, how we can identify them. They are pierced zealous, holy and committed. But when you take a closer look at their lives, you begin to spot similar errors. You begin to spot similar errors. The hypocrisy. The hypocrisy. 
the 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 the, the, the it, 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 you, whatever they are doing, the commitment, the zealousness is for the gains that is there for them to inherit, for them to get. That is why the return of the brother is so upsetting to the older brother. My dear children of God, we as Christians are encouraged to be agents of joy, of happiness, of peace. Because that is whom, that is, that is the spirit of whom by all we are called. We are all called to Christ Jesus. We are all called to follow Christ. We have all been baptized into him. We have all become co-heirs with him to the kingdom of God. Oftentimes you hear this, God is not going to come down to do good to someone. He's going to use you. He's going to use me. He's going to use us to bring that joy in this season of Christ's birth. In this season of God with us, Emmanuel, do you plan to bring joy to someone else? Do you plan to bring peace to someone else? Do you plan to bring happiness and smiles to the face of another? Just a kind act. Just one little kind act here or there. It is the season of love. It is the season of joy. You and I are called to be the agents of joy, to be the agents of peace, to be the agents of happiness. We are not called to be like the elder brother who gets angry, who gets bitter, when his brother returns. Especially here in this country, in, in, uh, in the Western world, we see at Christmas or at Easter, you see people who do not go to church, they want to come to church. And some of us are even questioning, what are they coming to do in church? Why would they come only once a year? How is it our business? How is it our business? Why are we judging this situation? Why? Why? What is our problem? My dear children of God, in this season we're going to open our mouths, we're going to we're going we're going to um we're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to touch each one of us, to touch our hearts, to endure our hearts with love, to endure our hearts with happiness. Because I know when we have true happiness, we can exude happiness. We can give it to others. We can pass it on. Again. While we, we, we try to pass on this happiness, be vigilant. Be vigilant. Stay awake or in, 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 in modern language, or say stay woke. Be awake. And avoid or resist the killjoy spirit. Resist it. Sometimes it is even in us. Sometimes it lives inside of us. You're praying for something. It's just like it's like a woman, an apology, an apology, not in any way talking to any of our, our brethren who is still believing God for the, for the fruit of the womb. Um, you you go. A child is celebrating birthday or something like that. You are, tr you are rejoicing. You are happy. You are dancing with the mother and everything. You are truly dancing. And inside of you, remember, I said, what are you dancing for? When will you dance for your own? That is the spirit of kill joy. That just come to steal your joy there and then. I know of, I know of uh, uh, one of our family friends today. She's a mother of eight, but for 13 years she was childless. And um, uh, her neighbor's children, one day, 
they were fighting and she was trying to because she observed what was happening and she said to the one who was in error you 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 like to look for trouble too much and pulled him away the the grandmother of those children said, hey don't do that you you've not given birth you don't know how it is and all she was trying to do was try to separate these children and tell the one that is wrong that what you are doing is wrong to your brother and that woman cried and cried and cried and today she's a mother of eight when she started giving birth after 13 years every other year she was giving birth every other year she was giving birth so in this season Whatever situation we find ourselves, whatever circumstance we find ourselves, when we notice that that spirit of killed joy is rising in us, or it's coming externally from the mouths of friends, of acquaintances, of neighbors, of whatever, let us be quick to resist it. Let us be quick to resist it. It is a spirit that is sown. It is a spirit that when it gets into us, it truly, it truly steals our joy, steals our spirit, steals, steals, steals our, our, our happiness, steals everything that you have. You find that, that people are demotivated. People don't want to make an effort at anything because their joy has been stolen. The enemy uses that a lot. When you have been believing God for something, you will be reminded all the time of the very many wrong things you have done that you are not supposed to do. In this season, we are called, we are encouraged to resist this. We are encouraged in every way to resist. Like our scripture says, resist the devil and he would flee. We are called, no matter how close this person is to us, do not let anybody in this season steal your joy. Say, oh, this is what others are doing this time. You can't do it. Some will say they are coming to advise you, but it's actually a form of mockery. Some will say they are coming to advise you, is actually a way to bring you down, to talk down at you. And that steals your joy. That steals the joy that the Lord has given to you. Until they remind you, or until that spirit wells up and reminds you, you are happy. But when it comes, you are down. Resist the spirit of kill joy. Resist the spirit of kill joy. Resist the spirit of kill joy. Let us remember the beautiful birth of our Lord. Let us remember that beautiful gift of the Father, of His only begotten Son to us. Let us remember that. Let us remember the children of who we are. Let us remember the God that we serve. Let us remember the one who came, who was born. The sole purpose of Christ's birth is to redeem me, is to redeem you, is to redeem us. He is the Savior of the world. He is the Savior of the world. Let us come and adore Him. Let us come and worship Him. Let us come and enjoy the joy of his presence, the joy of his birth. What is that that steals your joy? Cast it out. What is that that steals your joy? Avoid it. What is that thing that you see that gives you sleepless nights because it has stolen your joy? Avoid it. Our focus is Christ in the manger. That joy that came to earth on the first Christmas night is our focus. 
that is what we should concentrate on especially in this hour especially in this season especially in this time also that we are in our marathon seeking the face of God seeking a closer relationship with our God seeking a closer union with our God coming to joy to draw from the well springs of his joy of his salvation of his gift to mankind earlier on today we prayed for the Christmas gift we prayed for the Christmas gift that the Lord would give each one of us let that be our focus some may get it before Christmas some will get it for Christmas some will get it after Christmas but when it happens know that this indeed is your Christmas gift from the Lord my dear children of God we encourage again no matter the circumstances no matter the situation find joy find joy find joy and who can give this joy Christ ask for the Holy Spirit the promised helper to give us this joy we're going to pray we will pray tonight for families that are going through one sorrow one sadness or another that as Christ is the reason for the season Christ is our joy Christ is our peace no wonder he is called the Prince of Peace the joy would begin to flow into the homes of these families into these families my Lord and my God Jesus in the manger the infant Jesus the infant King the newborn Prince of Peace we call upon you we present the families gathered here and families will remember that are going through one situation or another Lord we ask for your peace for your abundant peace we ask for your joy in these families in the name of Jesus Christ Lord we ask that you manifest yourself mightily in these families Lord visit them in a special way visit our families in new ways that we know nothing about that father after this visit in the course of this visit lord a joy which passes human understanding the peace which passes human understanding will be bequeathed on these families in the name of jesus christ my lord and my god is this sadness as a result of poverty is this sadness as a result of joblessness is this sadness as a result of childlessness is this sadness as a result of ailment of sickness of disease my lord you are the mighty healer my lord you are the ever loving father my god you are the compassionate and merciful father father we ask you change the situations of these families in this season in the name of jesus christ my Lord and my God we have no one but you no one can give us true joy but you no one can give us true happiness but you my Lord and my God this is our earnest request tonight this is our prayers Lord we ask you father to visit us in new ways in the name of Jesus Christ father you are the multiplier of bread father for families that are experiencing or that will that are going through any form of hunger my lord and my god whether it be spiritual whether it be physical my lord and my god we ask you father in the name of jesus christ to come and multiply their bread to come and multiply their bread in the name of Jesus Christ to come and multiply their bread in the name of Jesus Christ that Lord they will experience true joy they will experience true happiness in the name of Jesus Christ father their family is going through one anxiety or another as a result of different situations either arising from their difficult children father 
come and alleviate their suffering father come and take away their anxieties and give them your peace in the name of jesus christ the birth of your son our lord jesus christ restores hope the birth of your son our lord jesus christ brings restoration the birth of your son our lord jesus christ brings salvation and so in the name of jesus christ lord we ask that these children begin to turn new leaves of life in the name of jesus christ let them begin to turn new leaves of life in the name of jesus christ the lord their new leaf of life will bring joy and happiness to their families in the name of jesus christ father for the ones that are lying sick father for the ones that are treating one ailment or disease or another my Lord and my God, ha, Papa, you are the miraculous working God. No wonder you are called the I am that I am. Father, we ask you to grant them healing now. That the joy of this family, of this family's Lord, will be full in the name of Jesus Christ. Because Father, we know that your blessings makes rich and adds no sorrow. And so, my Lord and my God, we ask for healing for the ones that are sick. That, Father, their families will experience true joy again. In the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, Father, we stand in your word as we declared earlier on today in the marathon. That, Father, even in this season of the marathon, the ones that have been called barren, the ones that have been called infertile, Father, they will become fertile. Father, the barren ones, Lord, will become pregnant with children and give birth to multiples in the name of Jesus Christ. That the joy of these marriages, Lord, will be full in the name of Jesus Christ. My Lord and my God, we thank you, Papa, for all that you do. We thank you, Lord, because we seek you. We seek you all the time. And Lord, we know we will find you. And Father, you will grant each one of us joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, our Redeemer. Thank you, the soon coming King. Yes, my Lord and my God, we praise and magnify your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My Lord and my God, we pray. For the leaders of our ministry. Father is there any one of these families. Is there any one of these families of the leaders of our ministry Lord. That are going through one difficulty or another. That are going through one pain or another. Papa this is the season of joy. This is the season of happiness. My Lord and my God. Come and grant true happiness and joy to these families in the name of Jesus Christ. That Lord, we serve you with joy. We serve you in happiness. My Lord and my God. Reward your children. Reward your children. Reward your children in the name of Jesus Christ. Reward us, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We lift up your son and your servant, Papa, that said yes to this great call. That has brought us under one umbrella of the hearts of Jesus and Mary ministry. My Lord and my God, we ask that in this season, you will make his joy full. Father, the joy in the home of Uwakwe Chuku and Chinyere Uwakwe, Lord, you will make full in the name of Jesus Christ. Their happiness, Lord, you will make full in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for the wonderfulness of our being. Thank you for this great gift that you have given each one of us even right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen.